Okay, well, we're gonna begin. So, this is about using the editor the proper way. And specifically, it's more for the visual editor. And of course, I had all this working, and now it's going. So, I'm from Michigan, and when I was, when I was 14, I was involved in Boy Scouts. And this particular year, we went to the Rifle River, which is kind of midway up through the hand, and we had what's known as a high adventure. When I was there, we were doing biking, hiking, and canoeing. Now, the first day, we went on a 30-mile bike ride. And I have not, at that time, I hadn't really done much biking or anything like that. And so I was pretty tired at the end. We set up our camp, and some other guys, they're like, hey, let's go mountain biking. And I'm thinking, why do we want to go mountain biking? We just bike 30 miles. I'm not going to go mountain biking with you. And so they kept bugging me. Come on, Seth, let's do it, let's do it. And I start thinking, well, I've got some friends. They mountain bike. They say it's a lot of fun. I just bike 30 miles, but what's a couple more? I think I'm in shape. I got this. I can do this. So I had this terrible bike that my parents got from, I don't know, Walmart, dollar store, something like that. And it's not the right tool to go mountain biking at all. But I spend most of my time walking up and down hills, I find out. And most of the other guys have already like ditched me. I have one leader who's behind me, probably just to make sure that I'm not going to get lost. And so one of these particular hills, I go up to the top, and I look at it, and I see I've got this path that kind of swerves around a couple things, and it's got a tree right here, a tree right here, a tree right here. And I'm thinking, OK, I've got to lean this way, this way. I'm probably going to die. So <laughs> I'm determining, do I really want to ride down this, or should I just walk down it? And as I'm thinking about it, I had actually pulled a little too far over the top, and that leader comes flying up over the hill behind me and bumps into me. So, well, I guess it's time for me to make my decision. I'm going down. Now, I wish that this is what happened to me, because this would be so much cooler if the trail just disappeared out from under me. But instead, I tried to go one way, tried to go the other. Handlebar clips a tree. I go flying over, and I land on top of a tree root. Um, right on my wrist, and I'm thinking, ouch, this hurts, and well, it's broken. So I ended up learning what it is that I'm supposed to do in this situation. Um, I needed to get a better bike. I needed to make sure that I actually had the correct tools and I knew what I was doing. Pretty much. Actually, I didn't mountain bike for another year after that because I didn't really see a need to. I also didn't get to go on the hiking or the canoeing trip for the rest of the scout trip, so that was kind of a waste too. But I also needed to be aware of my surroundings. I started to learn because, as I said before, I didn't do it for a year, but I started up again. I learned that I needed to focus on what was coming. I needed to focus on if there's, I don't know, a tree stump or a rock or something like that and how it is that I can get around it, which is part of doing things correctly. I had to learn from my mistakes. Don't just blindly go down a hill and think that you're going to be OK. And by doing this, I didn't get hurt too bad. I got hurt a little bit, but nothing ever as bad as breaking another limb. And the other thing is I didn't give up, because obviously I kept doing it. I found out that I actually really enjoyed mountain biking. So this is similar to working with the editor. You start your own blog, you're entering in your content, and you think to yourself, OK, I got this. I've got other friends. They've got blogs. They don't have problems. Theirs looks cool. And you go to the editor, you put in your content, you hit publish, and you look at it and you say, this isn't at all what I just put in. What is wrong with this? So you hit the back button. You start to make some changes. You look at it. You cry a little bit. You go back. Nothing's lining up. You start cursing. It just doesn't matter anymore. You're done. There's the point. Take a deep breath. You need to know what it is that you have to do first, and then everything will start to work out. So the first thing is learn the parts of the editor. And it looks like I'm colorblind because that is blue and that should be red. With the editor, there are, here's basically the main thing that you see right when you start a normal installation of WordPress. Up in that top corner, you've got the title. You've also got your content. 
and you have a place to add images. These are probably the three most important places to the editor, which you will be using almost every single time that you write a post. You might not have to do the images, but at least the title and the content. Once you put in your title, you'll have what's known as the slug right up here. And that is what will show up for the URL. And if you click on the little edit button that my slug thing is covering over, you can change that to something more friendly. So if you're writing this really long title and you look at that URL and it's something huge, people aren't going to remember that. People really don't want to have that come in. You can actually have it something that's a little bit smaller, a little bit nicer for them. This is also good for SEO by keeping that URL friendly because you can get a couple keywords in there. Now, in WordPress with the editor, there is the kitchen sink. And having this can make things a lot easier for you, or it might make things more complicated depending on what kind of person you are and how cluttered you like to have things. But there is this button right up here to the top right, and it's what toggles the kitchen sink, which brings in a second row of buttons. And those second row of buttons will be able to do more things in the editor for yourself. It also brings in an element breadcrumb, which is handy because if you're writing in the editor, and let's say that you've put in a link, and you want to put some content after the link, if your cursor's in the wrong spot, you'll start putting that content into the link itself, which you really don't want to do. This element bre breadcrumb down below has a P, which, says which stands for paragraph. It'll actually tell you if you are still within that link by adding a little A next to it so you can see how far down the line you are. And this will tell you if your cursor is in a spot where you may not necessarily want to have it done. So you need to understand what the elements are. And block level elements, inline elements, I'll explain those in a bit, but they're kind of color coded with the red and the gray. Block level elements, those are what will put a line break before and after you've added in some content. So that's generally your paragraphs, your headings, um, if you're putting in lists or anything. Inline elements, this is more like what you'd expect with Microsoft Word, where it has your bold, your italics, your links, images. Images can actually be changed. I'll explain that a little while later. But links in particular is one that people seem to have a hard time with. And I actually just learned a really cool thing today, which I'll talk about. But with links, if you highlight your text first and click the link button, that's how you can add a link onto the page easily. If not, a lot of people, they'll click the link button, put it in, and you can still add in your content. But a lot of people don't understand that you can just highlight it, and that will automatically grab that content. What I learned today from, I can't even remember his last name, Daniel. So he'll know who I'm talking about when he sees the video. But <laughs> if you highlight your, t your link and you have actually copied a URL from another site online or even from your own site and you just hit paste, it automatically will turn that text into a link. So it makes things a lot faster. So if you copy something, copy a URL from a, from a website and it's saved to your clipboard, if you just highlight text, and you just paste that link in, it automatically will take that text and turn it into a link for you. Nope, it automatically does that. So it's all taken care of, which I never knew about until two hours ago. If you want it to open in our tab, it actually will say the URL right underneath, and it has a little edit button. You can click on that, and then you can just check the tab button. Line breaks. Now, I'm normally in the text editor, ironically enough, but with the visual editor and text editor, they're different on how you put in line breaks. You need to hit Enter for a new paragraph with the visual editor. But if you hit Shift Enter, then it gives you a line break, so it doesn't add in any extra paragraph or any extra padding depending on margins, depending on how your theme has been developed. Text editor, on the other hand, you have to enter twice if you want a new paragraph and you hit enter once for a single line break. So depending on which editor you're in, it makes a difference on what happens when you're hitting enter or not. And why are you not working? So another thing that a lot of people will do is add YouTube videos to your site. And this is really easy, because all that you have to do is copy the URL, paste it into the editor, 
you're done, bam. No problems. This also works with Vimeo, Vine, Twitter, SlideShare, a whole lot of others where if you just put in the URL, it'll automatically place that right on the, right on the front end for you. Now, what if you want to constrain the width and the height to that YouTube video that you've gotten? You're going to use a short code. A short code is essentially a shortcut. It will put in dynamic content for you. Now, included with WordPress, you have audio caption, embed, gallery, playlist, and gallery you can use through the add image button. It'll automatically put it in for you. But I'm going to talk about the embed one real quick because that is how you can actually resize how big that URL, that YouTube video is that you want. So all that you do is you put in with the short code, you use the, the square brackets, type in embed, width equals whatever the width is that you want, height equals whatever that is, and then you put in that and close your short code by putting in the square bracket with a closing slash, and that will make it so that you can resize it to whatever you want. Some themes will actually still put a maximum constraint on it, but this gives you a little bit more control over it. Now, short codes are used all over on WordPress. Thousands of other plugins will actually put them in. I know that Gravity Forms, Contacts Form 7, WooCommerce, all of them use short codes, and a lot of them will actually give you the ability to just click a button and have it added in for you, so you don't have to worry about it. One thing to remember, short codes, and this is more for anyone who deals with code a little bit, it's not to be mixed with inline HTML, so just don't do it. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, that's great. You won't be doing it anyway. <laughs> Next, screen options are your friend. There's this little button up here at the top right, left, right. I don't know my lefts and rights, and you'll find that out, so I have a hard time looking at things. At the top right, when you click on it, it will bring down another menu where you can actually turn on and off certain things. For instance, one that commonly gets used will be this discussion tab on posts. If you have comments on and you don't want comments enabled on your site, you can check that discussion tab, and then you can scroll down, and there'll be a new little thing that says discussion where you can actually turn on and off comments for your site. So if there's something that you've seen on a blog post or something like that where it tells you, oh, well, you just need to go to this tab or this little module on your editor and you don't see it, you can go to the screen options and that will actually tell you where it is that those things are found. So you can actually enable them or disable them. The other nice thing is all of these modules that come up, you can literally drag and drop them however you want, customize it to make life easier for you. So if you've got a couple things that you put on your site to add in like extra fields or something, and they're put down at the very bottom, and you want them immediately after your content editor, you just drag it up to the top, and it will remember that and save that for you so you don't have to worry about always trying to scroll down to the bottom, and it might serve as a reminder for you. Next thing is you need to be aware of your surroundings. So this is some words of caution, just some other advice about the editor. Don't paste content directly into the editor unless you really want to. So if you copy some content from a website, it will retain a bunch of styles. Styles such as your font, your color, your size, um, links, and sometimes it will include a lot of other stuff. Big culprit of this would be Microsoft Word. If you are copying from Microsoft Word, it will add some weird code. It has gotten better with WordPress. It doesn't add as much code back, I don't know, three, four years ago the extra code that it added, you wouldn't see on Chrome, you wouldn't see on Firefox or Safari, but if you went into Internet Explorer, you wouldn't see anything on your site. And so Microsoft Word was not compatible with Microsoft Internet Explorer. They did a great job on that one. <laughs> but there's a little button that's a toggle, paste as text, which actually is in that second line on that kitchen sink. If you click on that, anything you paste in all the styles will be stripped out. So it will take out the fonts, the colors, and just put it in as plain text. Now, if you ended up pasting something and you realized, oh no, I pasted something, I really don't want to have to delete all this, go back, there's this little button right next to it that's called clear formatting. And all you have to do is select what code you want to remove the formatting from, click that button, and it clears it all up. So if you paste something from Word, 
and you've already made some modifications to the text, you can just re-highlight it, click that button, and it fixes everything for you. Now, proper formatting, it can greatly improve the readability that you have. So, sample layout, heading one. This is normally the post title. Most um, themes will have this set up by default for you. Headings two, heading three, when you put those in, it just makes it so it's easier for people to scan your website. As much as we would like to think that everyone reads everything that we write, they don't. They're going to scan through things, find out if they want to delve further into it, and so this will make it so that they can actually do it. This is not just good for readability, but it's also good for search engines at the same time. And there are a couple things that can help with your formatting. Um, there's one that came out in WordPress 4.3 where if you're in the visual editor, not the text editor, and you do a pound sign, pound sign, or hashtag, hashtag, whatever you want to call it, and then you hit space and start typing in your title, when you hit enter, it'll turn it into a heading two automatically. If you do three hashtags, it turns it into an H3. So you don't have to go through and up at the top where you have a paragraph, you don't have to go and change that to the specific heading. Yes? Two questions, please. One is for, for copy, for not heading, what, what do you choose? For copy, so just copy by default um, is paragraph, and that's what shows up on the normal thing, but if you're in a heading and you need to change it to a paragraph tab, then that same little thing on the uh, kitchen sink at the just bottom left of that toolbar, it will, you'll be able to just click and change it to paragraph, and it will automatically make it back to copy for you. With themes, so your question is if you're... Well, in, in my theme, I think I have formatted my, my heading levels with colors and things like that. And it's not actually heading tags? Or you formatted them so that they're just styled differently with the editor? I think that. If, that. if they're still heading tags, then you'll still get your same SEO value from it. If you've just like played with the font size and stuff, and you haven't actually made it a heading tab, it's still readable, it just won't help you with SEO purposes. No, I don't, I'm just talking about for style. Yeah, if it's, just, if it's just font and color, it won't, I mean, it won't hurt you, but. But if I, I don't know, but will it apply it? Will it apply it when you change them? Yeah. Like, like how do you set what, what the styles are for your fonts and colors? So, like, that's, that's done. That's that's done normally through the theme itself. Um, so the theme will have specific styles for the headings, so that way you keep your continuity. If you want to change them on your own, there's add-ons that you can add, but it will add an extra code into your so site. Are, are those heading options going to pick up? The It'll pick up the styling. theme's general styling. Yep. Thank you. That's my question. Okay. And I saw a question over here. Uh, yeah. So this whole pound pound thing, you're doing that in the editor when it's in the um... visual editor. That's where you, the visual editor is where you have all your buttons, like Microsoft Word, you can see your bold, italic. The other one's your text or HTML editor. When you're in there, some of those features won't work. Like if you hit two pounds and you hit enter, it's going to display on your site as two pounds and whatever the th okay. title is. And then type it, hit enter, and it'll automatically turn it into heading two, and it'll bring you right back to um, paragraph tab immediately after that. So makes things go a little quicker. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much a completely different talk. <laughs> I would say talk to me after. Yeah, talk to me after. I can give you a real quick one. Any other questions on this? All right. So, as I was talking about with the visual editor and the text editor, if you're using your own code, then make sure you're under the text tab, because if you're in the visual tab and you start typing in code, people will only see code because it will automatically change a lot of the values for you. Also, if you're using the text editor, then you probably don't want to be in this talk anyway, so get out. No. <laughs> but if you are, 
there are certain tags that are not allowed. And this file right here, which is in the code, KSES, which stands for, um, it's a recursive acronym, so KSES, strips evil scripts. Um, it will remove a lot of unfamiliar um, tags and stuff like that. But two of the ones which it also removes is if, well, it doesn't remove them. If you put in a paragraph tab, you can just ignore putting them in because you can just hit enter twice and it will bring in the paragraph tag. If you want to add in a div or something like that, then that will make it so paragraphs don't come in by default. So there's things you have to play around with, and that is more for people who want to use their own code. But it's just things that you need to be aware of if you ever decide to touch that. Never, 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 never insert PHP code into your website. There are plugins where you can literally say, OK, I want to be able to run PHP code in my website. And what this is saying is, I want to sell Viagra on my website. <laughs> So what that will do is it will allow people to basically put whatever they want onto your database, onto your site. It can be malicious, malicious and hack a lot of different things. Alternatives would be to have someone create a short code for you or find some short code that does it. Page templates. Short codes are basically, they're not PHP at all. Um, it's just something where WordPress will detect what they are and run PHP code in the back by using that short code. But it's not PHP, so that is a much safer alternative to using it. But don't ever put PHP code onto your website or enable it to do that, because there's just no telling what can happen. If you have an author or someone who doesn't like you anymore, they can do whatever they want just by playing around with some PHP code. So it's best just not to have it. But if you want to actually have something dynamic, Short codes, page templates, talk to a developer and have them make something for you if there isn't something available. Speaking of plugins, be very careful when you're using plugins. There are three things generally to watch for. Um, if they're not current, and WordPress now will tell you this plugin hasn't been updated in two years. It's usually a nice little sign. Bad reviews, another good sign. Few active installs, but these aren't tell-all solutions because there could be something that hasn't been updated in two years because it really does something very simple and doesn't need to be updated in two years. Or bad reviews. Sometimes people don't know what it is that it's supposed to do, and that's why they gave it a bad review. And if you active installs, you got new people who are building plugins all the time. It could be a brand new plugin. But if it hits all three of those, I'd recommend not using the plugin anyway. Now, WordPress also has what's known as the distraction-free writing, which is this little button just below the text editor. When you click it, if you move your mouse outside of the area, then it will automatically hide everything from you. So sometimes you really don't want to see a lot of extra clutter, and you just want to focus on writing. And the nice thing about that is it hides all of it, but if you want to quickly get to something, you just move your mouse over to where whatever panel it was, and everything will just fade right back in for you. So it makes things a little bit easier where you don't have to focus on all the extra stuff, but you can still access it when you need to. Now, speaking of clutter, short codes, if you install certain themes that have their own special short codes to it, and you switch to a new theme, a lot of times those short codes were embedded in the theme, and now you will be getting random content that still says one bracket short code and it has not appeared for anything. I mean, it, now people will see it just is a random short code. So there is a way to fix that. It's not the easiest way. The easiest, well, not the easiest, but you can first go through every single page, delete the short codes. It takes some time. Or you can go up to your functions PHP file for your theme, which I actually don't recommend. I'd say use custom plugin, but you can say add short code, and then you put in there, and these slides will be available so you don't have to copy this down. You can add in what the short code is, and then say return, return false, so that way if WordPress detects that short code, they just won't display anything. Now, the nice thing about that is people won't see a bunch of clutter on your site, and you still will be able to go in and later convert whatever content you need to from that short code. But it does require a little bit of effort on your part. So it's just something that you have to remember when you're switching themes or sometimes turning on or off plugins. So the next thing is to just try to do your best. 
to do things correctly. Mistakes, they're going to happen. So make them worthwhile, make the best of them. Even though I learned a lot more about mountain biking, I still had a lot of injuries. I got cuts, I got bruises, nothing major, but they're things that they happen. So you just learn from them and continue to move on. Take your time because accidents will happen when you go too fast. So you need to proofread. Quality over quantity. At my last job, I worked as a sign designer. And there are certain words. Who here has a word that no matter how many times you try spelling it, you always spell it wrong? Mine is occasions. I don't know if it's two C's. Actually, I'm looking at it right now. It is two C's. I like to do one C and two S's, which is not correct. So at my last job, there's this guy who comes in, and he has this rush order for special occasions. And it's on some fancy, expensive material. I quickly do it, put it out there. He approves it, so he looked at it. He didn't catch it either. And went to print. A couple days later, he comes back completely irate. And yeah, it's my fault, because I was using Photoshop. and. They have a spell check in Photoshop, but it's not the underlying squiggly thing, so I never see it by default, and I was lazy and didn't want to go up and click the little button. And I ended up having a problem with this. Sad thing is that was like the third time that week that I'd had problems with certain words. <laughs> Second time with occasions, actually. And I learned to just take a little bit more time, and it made things go a lot easier, and it made me look a lot better for my boss. So. Publish properly. You need to use these little buttons, save draft and preview. When you save a draft, then it will automatically save a revision of your site, which I'll talk about in a little bit how to access those. But it will save a version of all the content that's been on, or not your site, but the page you're working on, the post you're working on. It'll save that. And you'll be able to access it later. The preview button will not save anything but it will allow you to at least see something before it's gone live. So if you're making something that might not be the best idea, you can at least see how it's going to turn out for other people before everyone sees how beautiful you made something. So you also have your statuses. And what I've done here is I've actually expanded out the entire thing. So when you click on um, the visibility, then it brings out a little thing. When you click on schedule, it brings out. So that's why this looks a lot bigger than the normal publish button. But you can switch your status between draft, pending review, and published. And draft, that's exactly what it says. It's a draft. It's not going to be made public. Pending review basically says, hey, an editor or admin needs to come check this out, make sure it's good, then hit published. Or you can just publish it yourself, and once it becomes published, anyone can see it. Now, almost anyone, depending on how you have your visibility. When you click on the visibility, public is the default. Everyone can see it. You also have password protected. When you do that, you can physically choose what password you want for that page. Someone can then, it'll actually bring up a thing that says this page is password protected. And then they have to type in the password, and it will bring up the content form that way. Or private, someone has to be logged into your site to actually access it. So those are other things just to be aware of. You also can schedule posts. And the nice thing about scheduling posts is you can either set them for something in, in the future or something in the past. Hang on one sec. And when you're setting it for something in the future, let's say that you want to write 10 blogs all in one day. It looks really tacky when all of a sudden they see, oh, 10 blogs all came on today. You can say, OK, I want this this week, next week, the week after, the week after. And that way, you don't have to actually remember to go and write your content every week, but you can actually have it just kind of go through. You can also set it for the past, so if you actually needed to backdate something, I don't know why, then you'd be able to do that as well. What was your question? Ah, my question is password protected. Mm -hmm. It's related to one uh, post or page or for a uh, whole website. It would be for, so the question is, with password protecting something, um, is it for a single page or is it for the entire website? It's just for that page. If you want something for the entire website, then you'd actually probably have to get a plugin or have something custom. Passwords for different pages. Yes, different passwords can work for different pages. So, like an example would be a photographer that has a whole bunch of different clients, and they have a page where you've got all your if they're wedding. Yep. Exactly, and so okay. Yep. Lovely. That answers my question. Um, 
can you have this under the same website or you have to create a subdomain client account? Or it could be on the same website. Mm -hmm. So you can just have different links. You give it to the client. The only thing about having a password protected page is a lot of times, depending on the theme, it will still show up on your list of posts. So some, most themes will not display it, but there are a couple where I've seen where they will display those password protected things. And so someone can click on it, but they won't be able to see anything because it will first say you need to put in the password to access it. It's just something to be aware of. Do you put a link of other clients? Sometimes. It depends on your theme. Um, my parents are actually photographers, and with theirs, we developed a custom solution for clients to log in and access their own stuff, but that's a lot more intensive. Would the password protected oh. be the same problem as doing password protecting an individual page? Mm. With pages, not so much because usually you physically have to add the page to the menu unless your pages are automatically coming in. just the individual page for that you're working on or the individual post. So that's how you can have your own control over individual pages and posts. This is all just, all just for one page. Yes, so this is all for one page. If I didn't know that I shouldn't have been copying and pasting out of Microsoft Word, <laughs> um, and all my posts are done that way, if I go back now and um, use the text tool on posts that have already been posted, will it erase your posts? It won't, it will erase, yeah, so if you highlight everything and you click that clear formatting button, then it will erase all the extra code. It will leave your content, but it will remove all styling as well, which is something to oh, okay. be aware of. I mean, yeah. I'm not sure if it removes hyperlinks or not, actually. So I'm not going to go out and say. Yeah, if you. Yeah, you can highlight portions of it. I'm not positive about the hyperlink. I'd have to check that one out. I don't know. But the only problem is that it's not that pretty much going on? Pretty much, but <laughs> it just adds a lot of extra code, which Google may not be happy about either. So other things that you might have to be aware of, but I don't know, honestly. I'm not an SEO expert. You can also add in special characters to your website. And that is right next to that clear formatting button. You click on it, and it brings up an entire character map. So no more trying to remember what the hotkey is or going into the character map. And that way, you can actually have the one half symbol instead of one slash two. There is a word of caution behind this. Depending on what theme you are using, um, they may have a font that does not support all these characters. And so you might want to hit that preview button to find out if a special character is displaying. Sometimes it displays in the correct font. Sometimes it displays in an incorrect font. And other times it might display as a little square box. So you do have to double check to make sure. But you do have access to them. It just depends on if the font actually supports those characters or not. Isn't it also browser dependent? I mean, if your browser doesn't actually support that particular uh, character set. So even if, it's, if I look on my system, I check with my system, that doesn't mean that somebody else looking on there is <coughs> It depends on, oops. It depends on the font stack that happens. So if you're using a standard one, then what you see will be, well, they'll be covered. If you're using a Google font, then since it's downloading it from that third party source, they'll be seeing it as well. So it depends really on what the font is. But yeah, that is something to be aware of also. Um, adding and editing images, it's actually really easy because all you do is you drag the file you want right onto the editor and it puts the image in for you. And I am scrolling through things. And then it has a little option with a little pencil icon that you can click on and you can choose your alignment or you can choose where you want to link things to. You can choose the size so you still have the ability to edit that image after you've dropped it in. Um, if you go in and you click the add media button, it'll also bring up a way that you can say select gallery or set gallery something gallery, create gallery. And when you click on it, then you can actually select a whole bunch of images, say OK. It will bring you to another page where you can kind of rearrange your gallery images how you want, put in captions, and then it will automatically put a full on gallery onto your website. When you're editing these images, there's that pencil icon I was talking about. 
um, when you hover over it or click on it, then it will bring up just quickly for your alignment. And by default, it's whatever you last use. But align left will have all your content kind of go to the left. Center makes it so the content's above and below. Right has it wrap around. The other one is align none. And I found this out a little while ago. When you click on it, it actually puts a line across your image, which I thought might have been a glitch. But I found out that this line is to show exactly where your baseline of text is so you know where this text is going to happen. The only thing to remember is when you do that, as this text moves to the next line, then it's going to drop down below and it's not going to wrap around it. So that's the one thing to remember about with a line none. It's usually better if you've got like a small icon or something like that that might be going in. Yes? That's your own preference. I normally will actually put them in at the size that I want, and then instead of having it medium, I do full size. Um, but that's my own personal choice. Um, Is it better going to leave from a tube as a suppressed Yeah. So it's really what it is that you want. That's what I normally do, but for most people, they're not going to go into Photoshop. And so you either use the medium size, which is constrained to 300, or the large size, which is constrained to something else, I don't know. And you can change those also in the settings for the defaults. But this will it kind of be the default. It won't, just, it won't slow down the ability to display just because it's br when you add those images, it creates all those image sizes for you. And so when someone loads the page, they will see whatever size you've selected on there. The bigger the image is, the longer it takes to load. So it is kind of, you got to be careful when you're putting in your full image size. But if you have it something where it's already optimized and not like terrible to go in, then you'll be fine. You're better off optimizing it final That's normally what I do. But that's a preference thing. So, yeah. Another thing is to remember that mistakes happen. Since that wipeout on my bike, I would like to say that I never wiped out again. As I told you, I have. And there's an important key when I wipe out now. Not now, I actually haven't done mountain biking in a while. But when you're going down, I got these pedals where I was clipped into the bike. If I fall, it's going to hurt because I'm taking the bike with me. So when you start to wipe out, you're looking and you're like, OK, what's my exit path? I need to unclip, do all this fun stuff. Because when I was at scout camp and I'm going down that hill, what's going through my mind is something more along the lines of, ah! <laughs> so you need to just stay calm. Don't panic. Um, there's been many times where I'll get a call from a client, and I can tell that just before they're, they've called me, they're kind of, <sighs> they've been running around screaming, <laughs> and you just need to relax, assess the situation, <laughs> because there are two things that may actually save your site or your page. First thing is the revisions I talked about. Hitting that save draft, it will let you go back in time. And when you click this button, it appears, um, it appears pretty much, it's in the published screen somewhere. It's either between the visibility and the when it was published or somewhere in there. But if you click on that button where it says browse, then you can go on here and you can literally like kind of move around through time and it will give you a change log between both of them. So you, you click restore revision, everything is set. You've gone back in time, you've got your saved content, you can continue going through and trying to fix it. How far back can you go? Um, that is dependent on what your theme or what your WordPress setup is. By default, as far back in time as you want. Sometimes you can change it where you only want to have the last 10, but it's basically whatever has been set up. Next thing is if your site is broken, you may have to restore a backup. So always, always, always have a backup system. Um, there's a few providers you can get it from. VaultPress is the one from Automatic. Backup Buddy from iThemes. Um, BackWPUp is a free solution. All of them are great. Just 
have a backup situation put in place and make sure that it's storing those files at a different site because you want to make sure that things are, are nice and safe. I don't know why. The autosave, normally what happens is it's while you're working on it, but as soon as you actually hit save, it removes that previous autosave that's been in there. But I don't know when it's triggered or how often. Sorry, can't help with that. Yeah. Anchor text for the links? Yeah. Yeah. Um, WordPress kind of removed that one. There is a way you can put it in with the plugin, but there is not a native way besides going into um, the HTML editor. So there's a plugin that allows me to enter anchor. You're talking about the title tag that comes with the text, or are you talking about the actual text in the link? I'm talking about saying that at the top of my page, I say, well, you know, chapter 12, and I want my user to click on that, and it'll jump down. Oh, the anchor links. Yeah, with those you'll want to, there's, talk to me after, I'll explain that. Yeah, that would be something that you'd probably want to do with HTML. There are plugins as well. Yep. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you after. So last thing is don't give up because some people, they make all this look really, really easy. And a lot of them have worked hard on things for a long time, so they have the experience. A lot of people have failed many times, so they have the experience to know what to look for. But if you keep trying things, then things are going to work out. It just requires a little bit of work. The last thing, it's your website. If you don't agree with anything I've said, that's fine. I might cry a little, but I don't care. Own it. Make it yours. Um, just make it something that you love. That's the whole point in having this ability to have your own website. Here's some resources. They're posted on the slides. I'm Seth Alling. You can find me at SethAlling.com. I'm the lead developer for Ranch House Designs. And Twitter, I'm Seth Alling. Or Seth Alling. You can get my slides. They're at SethAlling.com slash WCTO. I know they'll also be posted on the WordCamp Toronto website. And that's all. I've got two minutes for questions, but I don't know if it <laughs> might be better to talk after. Um, columns. How do you think of columns in the visual editor? You don't. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk to you after on that one. Yeah. yeah. They will fill up your database as time goes on. I normally have mine set to like after 10 to just start recycling them, but that's, it's whatever people really want. Well, you can't necessarily delete them from the WordPress editor. You'd have to go into the database and delete them. That takes a little more effort. I write all mine from scratch. Oh, okay. So do you sell yours on Invato or anything? No. No, I do everything custom for clients. So yeah, I there are some of the theme sites you can get where they're better than others, but it's hit or miss on what you want done because the ones that add a lot more options, they make things bloated and things will run slower. kitchen sink. So on that top uh, menu button, it's the very last button on the right. You click on that and it'll bring in the second line. That's visual editor only. HTML editor won't have any extra buttons. That's the way I prefer it is actually no extra buttons, but I get enough questions from people that I have to learn the visual editor.